Welcome back, and it's that time again. No Light's having another sale. This is their summer sale, and you can get up to 40% off on certain things, and it starts at 8 p.m. today and ends on 11.59 p.m. the 14th. Uh, we'll talk about all this stuff, plus this brand new model they have out. This is uh, the Warncliffe Freeze. Get started with the knife first, and then we'll talk about this at the end. So the Freeze is a, I'd call it medium-sized knife at around 7.45 total length and about a 3.26 inch blade. You got a nice worn cliff blade. It's got a black coating on there, 154 CM steel. You got a nice little row of jimping that does grip the thumb decently. And you got that nice little ramp. So you're nice and locked in. You have a very needle-like point right there for doing bulky, bulky stuff. And you have a medium height flat grind that comes down to around 20 thousandths behind the edge. So it should slice fairly well. You do have a sharpening choil. It does clear that plunge and it will give you a little bit of sharpening light before it starts to widen up in the back. Uh, I sharpened it after the testing and it's kind of starting to widen up but that was probably me you probably get one or two sharpenings before it starts to widen up uh, and yeah if you want to widen it up yourself you can because the stop pin is not in the way now let's see what this thing can do the knife came with a really good edge out of box and of course a straight straight edge like on this worn cliff is going to do excellent at box cutting uh, cardboard cutting because you got the straight edge it's uh you know that's why utility knives are straight edges like that because it's easy to put a lot of power behind the cut and they slice very well also so this is one place this knife will shine and it uh definitely did in this part of my testing um, I was going through it very fast and I didn't wear out the coating too much. We'll look at it in the actual review, but I think it held up fairly well. Nice and comfortable so far, but I do have gloves on at this point. So we'll see how that does later on down the road. Now we're going to test the ergos in this piece of birch and uh, we started off doing light cuts just to see how that edge was the edge was nice and crisp and i was able to make fine curls rather easily and uh, i go back and forth on you know doing wood shaving with a worn clip blade it works fairly well but you, you you tend to bite into the wood a lot easier because you don't have any curve uh to that edge so it would it was doing fairly well for the blade shape it has um, I was able to get a lot of force in there in the hammer grip nice and comfortable no hot spots to speak of and yeah I started really bearing down into the wood and uh, I felt good I was locked in and uh, I could have done this for a good while you know definitely could make a uh, feather six in a pinch with these this type of blade no problem probably wouldn't be my first choice though now this is where it's really going to shine doing dry cuts with that thin tip it's like a little scalpel going through the material you can get very detailed with your cuts i'm going to do some s curves right here i mean beautiful hey i like that camera angle change I'm trying to trying to give you a little bit more action here i'm learning i know i'm not the best at that but um it's fun to try to do different things now as you can see i did lift the uh sisal rope onto this block because <laughs> worn cliffs you just can't get enough edge on there unless i drag the rope to the edge of the table but it's doing well it's got a pretty good amount of bite i mean as you can see i'm doing mainly push cuts this is three quarter inch sisal rope i usually use half inch but i've ran out and where i get mine from they're out of it and uh, ordering it's kind of silly because they want to charge you double the price but uh, that said it did really well the only thing is is this half inch sisal rope is not as tightly woven so it wants to spread out a lot and it makes it look like the knife struggling which it's not um, so it did great I went through 42 cuts before I ran out of rope I'd say it did just fine hopefully it still has some bite to it for the last part of the test but I'm definitely happy with the results so far. Once again, these drag cuts on a flat surface is where this knife's gonna shine. 
um, it, it, it's gonna do okay doing this type of stuff like slicing in it but it's not that easy your knuckles and fingers want to come in contact with the board and you're only getting a very small portion of that edge uh, onto the surface see that it's getting more and more difficult because that tip is wanting to bury into the cutting board I don't want to snap that tip it's very uh, dainty but it's getting the job done I'm just kind of rolling the material around and here you can see I can't get all the way down I have to pull the blade back out because it is coming in contact with the board uh, toward the end so can it be done yes is it the easiest no um, and you can see it looks like it struggles a little bit with the denim but it's more so I'm not able to get it all the way down that's why I lift it up just so you can see how much better it does when you got more of that edge on the material you're cutting so I think it did great we'll test the edge once we're done but you know I think it it definitely uh, did better than I expected on some of the flat stuff let's check out that edge it's got a few small little hang-ups but nothing major I call it good Let's take a look at the action you have a flipper and you do have some jimping there so you can do a light switch nice and snappy and if you want to push button it it'll come rocketing out it's on ceramic ball bearings with a ceramic detent ball um, fairly uh, smooth on the drop as well not a super free dropper but I'm okay with that uh, like I said the, it's got a nice snappy action to it so I'm good with it uh, let's close it up take a look at these handles you got aluminum scales here that have like a powdery texture to them not overly powdery or anything i think it feels nice you have a chamfer going all the way around the scales so no sharp spots where you don't want them to be you have a torx t8 on the pivot unfortunately we have a t6 on the body screws and the clip screws however the clip is reversible a tip, tip up deep carry pocket clip so it's it pretty fairly deep as you can see just that little bit sticking out you do have a lanyard hole for all the lanyard people there let's open it up you have two standoffs in the back right here and as you can see you have a good bit of internal milling on the show side scale and a little bit on uh, the lock side scale the knife's coming in at 3.33 ounces which is uh, good but they could have made it even lighter if they wouldn't have put this stainless liner on the show side scale it would have lightened it up a good little bit uh, but as it sits it, it carries nicely and it, it wasn't uh, cumbersome in the pocket let's take a look at the lockup it's sitting at around I'd say 50% or so maybe 60% absolutely no play in any direction this is a very very tight lockup well done the access to the lock bars is good you got a nice little cutout right there easy to get there uh, not hard to push over size comparison with the Ontario Rat Model 1 and 2 the Sincut Watuga and the Kaiser Doman Lastly, with the CJRB Echo and the Pyrite. Uh, it's about the same overall length as the Pyrite. Nitpicking plates, uh, I would have loved to see a stone wash on the black finish because as you can see, it'll start to rub that pretty good. Uh, give us a little bit more sharpening toil here. Uh, give us some T8 hardware throughout. Inset the clip into the frame and uh, you could lose this show side uh, stainless scale and just give us aluminum lightened up. But other than that, I like the knife a good bit. It performed nicely. It's smooth, snappy, comfortable in hand, and it was a joy to carry. So, you know, if, if none of those deal, if none of those things I talked about are deal breakers, I could definitely recommend the knife. It, like I said, it did really well. And now we got some other stuff to check out. They started doing some nice hanks. Here's two of them. You got, uh, you know, the rougher side on this side, and you got the nice uh, microfiber on this side which I love and we also have this blue one they're nice full-size Hanks that have uh, all their gear on there and you also have that that nice soft side to clean glasses or knives whatever and I like the stitching very very well done and we also have some new lights and this one's probably my favorite of the bunch this is the new i mini 2 um, all you have to do with this night this uh, light right here is un pull it off the base and there you go the light is active and as soon as it goes back onto the base it turns the light off so the little guy plenty bright enough to find some keys at night if you dropped them on the ground you have 50 lumens which is 
plenty bright enough for a keychain light. It's fairly lightweight and you have a cap on the end right here that you just plug into a USB power block and you can charge it directly like that. Comes with an extra cover right here. That's a, this is a little rubber cover so you don't ruin that. And it comes with a little uh, clip if you want to clip it to a key ring or something like that. Next, we have the brand new i1R2 Pro. I love these little lights as well. These things are nice and bright. Here's the i1R2 low and high. Yeah, really bright for this little bitty old light. Uh, max at 180 lumens and I love how they got the USB-C rechargeable on there so I don't have to pull the battery out or anything I can just plug in my uh, USB-C so it's gonna be a fast charging I have a nice little o-ring right there to keep moisture out very smooth threads five lumens on low and you twist it to get the 180 lumens on high the bright orange uh, yeah this would be an excellent little hunting light to put on your backpack or something. It comes with a little USB-C cable that uh, you can charge it with. I will have necessary links in the description and in the comments. Lastly, this was my first um, experience with their Warrior series and I must say I'm very, very impressed. This has been my go-to dog walking uh, flashlight as of late. It has some nice texturing on the aluminum body, nice and grippy. You have a side clicky right here, and you have a magnetic tail base that it comes with. You have the multi-direction uh, pocket clip. You can hook it onto your pants or hook it onto a bill of a cap or something. It is removable, and you have a crenulated bezel as well. It also comes with this magnetic charging base right here, and it also comes with this L-shaped piece that you can stick to something and then have it mounted, you know, wherever you would like it to mount. Here's the Warrior Mini 3. If you press and hold it for two seconds, you get the moonlight mode, then low mode, double press the turbo, turbo mode, 1750 lumens, I think it is. That's, uh, yeah, it's pretty far away. It's at least 50 yards to the fence right there. And probably... I don't know, 100 yards to the top of that tree, maybe. Pretty darn bright. Triple press, you get strobe. Yep. And tail click, half press, you get medium. And full press, you get turbo. That's a bright light. It gets pretty darn hot, though. With the light on, if you press and hold the button, it'll cycle through the modes. You can stop it wherever you want. And it has protection. If you get too close, it'll drop down to medium mode. One thing I love about Olight is they give you a detailed diagram of all your different functions. Uh, like you have, you can pause and read that if you'd like. If you get too close, it steps down so you don't burn. Like say if it accidentally goes off in your pocket, it doesn't burn your leg or anything. And then all your different configurations right here. So very, very cool that they do that. Uh, I've had some flashlights where it was like uh, trying to read the actual other languages or something. But this right here is a very very cool flashlight i have been loving this thing the new olight warrior mini 3 is an upgraded version of the classic warrior mini 2 it's a compact high lumen rechargeable dc flashlight that features a side switch as you can see right there for daily use and a tail switch for tactical operation Love it goes straight to turbo mode. And like I said, that is also mag a magnet as well. The three level battery indicator shows the battery level when to charge. When you turn it on right there, you can see right there, I probably need to charge it. This light's compatible with Olight's classic magnetic charging cable. And it's extremely fast and easy to recharge. Compact, but mighty. I can definitely say that it is a uh, a very bright flashlight as you can see. Here's some of the specs if you want to pause and read. So I'd love to hear what y'all think about these new products. And like I said, I will have links in the description. They do help support the channel if you would like to do that. If not, 
totally fine as well. But like I said, even if you don't want to help support the channel, you can go check out. They do have some awesome deals, like always. One thing that Olight is definitely always great at doing is giving us some good deals. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute amazing day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.